Welcome to iLecture Online and today we're going to look at some example problems for uh, calculating the electric field due to the presence of some charges. So here's a good example. We have a situation with two different charges. It says we have a 12 microcoulomb charge that is placed at the origin and then we have a second negative 8 microcoulomb charge which is placed one meter to the right of the first charge and then they're asking us to find the electric field both the magnitude and the direction at a location x equals 3 meters which is to the right of both of the charges so let's make a little diagram to show you what that looks like so let's draw an xy axis since everything is going to be down the x-axis we'll draw a little short y-axis here's our x-axis and let's put the two charges on there we have the first charge which is a positive charge so let's call that q1 equal to 12 microcoulombs remember microcoulombs is 10 to the minus 6 coulombs uh, let's call it q1 and we have a second charge, one meter to the right, which is a negative charge. Call that Q2, which is equal to a minus eight microcoulombs. All right, distance between them, one meter. And now we're interested in finding the electric field at this location right there. Uh, that's about three meters, not about, exactly, three meters to the right of the origin. And we want to know what the electric field is. There we go. Of course, electric field is a vector quantity, which means we have to find both the magnitude and the direction. So, how do we do that? Well, the best way to go about doing that is to represent, in a graphical format, the electric field due to Q1 and the electric field due to Q2 independently at this location. So, starting with the first charge, we know that since it's positive, the electric field emanates away from the charge. And that means that when we go over here, we can see the electric field would be to the right due to the presence of that. So there would be E1, that's the electric field due to charge one at that location. Now Q2 will also cause an electric field to exist at that location. Uh, since Q2 is significantly closer than Q1, I would assume that the electric field strength will probably be a little bit bigger even though it's a smaller charge. But remember that the electric field strength is proportional, inversely proportional to one over R squared. Distance is important here, so I would assume that electric field strength due to this charge will be a little bit bigger and it's going to be pointing in the opposite direction because for negative charges, the electric field emanates towards the charge. And so you, I would then expect that over here there would be an electric field in this direction E2, meaning due to charge 2, and I assume that that would be bigger than E1. Again, I could be wrong, but we'll find out in just a moment. Now, to find the net electric field, I need to do a vector sum of these two, and if E2 is bigger than E1, that would mean that I would end up with a net electric field, wow, to the left, E total, and this is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> So to do that, we're going to find the magnitude of both E1 and E2 first. So oh, let me grab my black pen here. So we have E1 using the equation that we associate with finding the electric field due to a point charge right there. That's equal to K times Q1 over the distance from Q1 to the location we're interested in squared. Plug it in those numbers. So we get 9 times 10 to the 9th. That's newtons meters squared per coulomb squared times Q1. Now Q1 was 12 microcoulombs, 12 times 10 to the sixth, or I should say minus six coulombs. That would be an awfully big charge with a positive six. And then the distance squared, so the distance here is three meters, so that's three meters squared. And now we grab a calculator to see what that is equal to. So we have 9 e to the 9 times 8 exponent 6 minus, and now we divide that by 9, and we get 8,000. Let's see, let's 9 e to the 9 times 12 e to the 6 minus equals, and then divide that by 9 equals. There, that's more like it. So that would be 12,000, and the units for electric field is newtons per coulomb so we have newtons here meter squared cancels out <clears throat> and coulombs divided by coulomb squared is divided by coulombs so we have newtons divided by coulombs that's the magnitude of e1 
We're doing now the same for E2. It's equal to K times Q2 over R2 squared. So it would be the charge Q2 and the distance from Q2 to the location here we're interested in. So that's equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th Newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared times, now we have 8 microcoulombs. I actually have minus 8 microcoulombs, but since I'm looking for the magnitude of V2, we don't have to worry about the sign. So simply write 8 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the whole thing divided by the distance between here and here would be 3 minus 1, which is 2, 2 meters squared. And plugging that into the calculator, what do we get? We get 9e to the 9th times 8 exponent 6 minus, and then we divide that by 4. And we get 18,000 newtons per coulomb. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we have the two magnitudes, and it does look like E2 has a bigger magnitude than E1. So the net electric field will be pointed to the left. So now we have to add the two vectors together. Remember, when you add vectors together, you can only add x components and y components together. But in this particular example, since everything is on the x-axis, uh, we only have x components, so we can now do the vector sum uh, to find the final magnitude and direction. So we can say E total is equal to the sum of E1 and E2, because everything is in the x direction. Now, E1, the magnitude is 12,000 newtons per coulomb, and it's directed to the right, so that's a positive electric field. So it's a positive 12,000 newtons per coulomb in the positive x direction. We add to that E2. Now E2 is pointing to the left, 18,000 newtons per coulomb, so that's a negative 18,000 newtons per coulomb in the x direction. All right, now we add those two together. We get the electric field is therefore equal to a minus 6,000 newtons per coulomb. And of course, that's in the x direction, or the ne negative x direction. And that would be the result. Therefore, that would be the electric field strength and direction at this location due to the presence of those two charges. And that's how you do that. Okay, let me come up with some more examples for you.